I'm warning you. You're entering a big error, Flynn. I'm gonna have to put you on the game, grid. <laughs> <laughs> My name is David Friedman, and I wrote the cover story about Emotive for the December issue of Inc. Magazine. Emotive is a company that makes a $300 mind-reading headset. Now, a mind-reading headset, that sounds kind of silly, or at least it did to me when I first heard about it. It turns out that physically there's not a lot to the headset. It's slightly more elaborate than a basic phone headset. It looks a little bit almost like a scaled-down bicycle helmet. And as I tried it, I sort of felt a little bit like I was in a science fiction film. And in fact, the uh, co-founder of the company, uh, Tan Lee, told me that when she was a little girl, Star Wars made a huge impression on her, and she went around trying to conjure up the Force to try to move objects around her. Use the Force, Luke. Thinking back on science fiction movies and books, often even looking hundreds or even thousands of years into the future, a lot of stories don't even believe will have brain reading devices. I mean, if you think about Star Trek, they have teleportation, but for the most part, they don't have mind reading technology except for the Vulcan mind meld. The way that Emotive has created its detection suites is based on the way in which humans interact with each other. So we have three categories of detections, uh, which we call detection suites, and they are expressive, affective and cognitive. Expressive is all about facial expressions. Affective is about understanding your emotional experience. And cognitive is really getting to one of humans longest and oldest fantasies, which is all about being able to control objects just by thinking about it. Well, I tried it out and it's kind of odd when you're trying to concentrate and have something happen on the screen. You can see the rock going in the air. And you can see the screen turning orange with the more intense focus of my effort. Getting yourself to think your way into doing so, something is not really a skill you naturally have. You have to let it all go, Neo. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. Free your mind. But of course, the device is pretty limited right now in what it lets you control. It, it starts off only by letting you control stuff in a video game. That's what the first version is aimed at. But I'm kind of excited about what the headset is going to allow you to control in the future. Have you tried this? I've tried it. Thanks. It's great. Huh? There are obviously tremendous scale. possible applications in, in, uh, for disabled people, the people who can't move some or all of their body, being able to control things just by thinking about them. Oh! It's got a hell of a grip. It's 400 foot-pounds. You could crush every bone in your hand. All right, attach it to his shoulder. Hooked it up to our electric wheelchair, and I'm controlling the wheelchair using my blinks and a smile. Now blink right to go right. And it's already being used um, for market research. Instead of asking people in a focus group or in an audience what it is they're thinking and feeling, you could just record their emotions. And in fact, Genie's the idea of actually registering and recording bad. emotions is something that's really been missing from high tech. We can communicate all kinds of things, but emotion tends to be cut out of most high tech devices. Even when we're online, if you want someone to know uh, how you're feeling, you generally have to type it out to them. We've always had to give a command to a machine or a series of commands for it to do anything for us. But um, when we look at the communication between people, it's actually far more interesting because we take into account far more than what is explicitly expressed. We look at facial expressions, we read body language, and we intuit emotions and feelings into our dialogue with one another. And so our vision and emotive for the next generation of human-machine interface is that it will evolve beyond the conscious um, interface that exists today, and uh, non-conscious inputs will play a really big part. Now, technologies are improving all the time in terms of figuring out what's going inside, uh, what's going on inside of our brains. It may be that for $300 in the future, we're going to get a device five years from now that'll really know close to exactly what we're thinking. 
and I think that'll really increase the options and maybe the market for this sort of thing. So it sounds like science fiction today may 5, 10, 15 years from now may be the stuff of everyday life.